Hi guys, I'm Arabda. You're watching Hal Bone Flash videos. And today our guest is Ethereum Reserve Dollar. Welcome to the chat, Steve, and tell us a bit about yourself. Wonderful. Well, thanks for welcoming and thanks for hosting Ethereum Reserve Dollar on this. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you a little bit about myself and then I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about ERD going forward here. Absolutely. Uh, so for me, I'm originally from the US, um, but then very early on in my career, moved over to China. Um, I started in the traditional finance space. I worked at a hedge fund uh, and then I actually joined crypto in 2017 when this hedge fund um, uh, put together a cryptocurrency long short fund spinoff. Uh, and at that point, I joined as director of strategy for this hedge fund and then worked there for a couple of years, moved over to an asset management startup over in Hong Kong. that was doing some really cool sort of blockchain based supply chain product development. Uh, and then at the same time, during this period, I started a crypto marketing company called Go Global Market, which I still run today. And that's actually how I ran into ERD in the first place. We were just talking some talking shop, some tricks and tips on how to grow these very early stage uh, protocols. Uh, and then uh, I ended up joining ERD. Uh, I really loved what the story that they were telling me and the sort of mission that they uh the co-founders um were trying to drive forward so then i i guess i joined erd uh back in uh april um just a couple of months actually they actually started doing the development but then uh hadn't started going uh and going and promoting themselves right um thanks for sharing your story thus far um and talk to us about erd what's the mission and vision there Absolutely. So I'll, I'll give you sort of the boilerplate first sentence here, and then I'll talk about what that actually means. Um, okay. So ERD is a decentralized lending protocol that enables users to borrow in USDE. This is our stable coin that's pegged to the US dollar using LSDs and blue chip DeFi tokens as collateral. Now, okay. what this actually means is, you know, we take a look at the market and, and we see that there's actually sort of a trend towards centralization in terms of the products uh, within crypto that have gained a lot of mainstream adoption. So what we're trying to do is address the sort of dominance of particularly centralized stable coins uh, and offer a, a truly decentralized sort of capital efficient alternative. Right. So, uh, this capital efficiency, this is a phrase that we typically get questions about. What does this mean? And, and it's pretty simple. You know, we offer a minimum collateralization ratio of 110% on our protocol, um, which means that for every $1 in collateral that you bring over to our decentralized lending platform, you get 90 cents on that, which is allows you to take your assets significantly farther than um, on other competitor pro uh, products and platforms uh, that you might buy. So, you know, the benefits of ERD uh, include low interest rates, high capital efficiency, as I mentioned, direct redemptions, which is really big, uh, particularly in the industry that um, we're competing in and decentralization. Uh, and again, we're looking to become what we like to say a truly decentralized reserve asset on the Ethereum network, on Ethereum, by Ethereum, and for Ethereum. Got it, excellent. And where is the product roadmap at right now? What's coming up next as well? Absolutely, so we are uh, currently three weeks into our testnet and we are absolutely psyched about it. Just a little bit um, uh, promotion here. We just hit 2,500 uh, testnet transactions yesterday. Actually. Awesome. We are uh, up in the clouds right now. And then uh, we're also in the midst about halfway through um, our third and final contract audit um, by Quantstamp, actually. Of course, Halborn did our second uh, contract audit. Once our testnet concludes in about a week and a half um, and our contract audit by Quantstamp finishes up, then we will go ahead and release our mainnet version one. Um, hold a couple of mainnet related activities while we're then building towards V2, which will include support for 
additional collateral types, uh, DeFi, uh, blue chip DeFi tokens, think Uni, think WBTC, think um, Aave, all of these sort of tokens that have a lot of liquidity behind them, which will allow us to um, add a little bit more of the benefits of diversification across our pro protocol um, and across user loans. Fantastic. Um, also, congrats on the adoption thus far on the testnet. Going forward in the next two or three years, where do you see ERD? Building. Building. Uh, that's that's the best answer that we could give um, and best answer that you can sort of hope for in this space. You know, obviously, uh, a lot is going to be based upon the market, uh, market recovery, what sort of on-chain activity uh, you can find right now. Uh, I don't think that is any secret to anyone here. We are recording this video on August 22nd, 2023, and we have been um, really subject to quite a long and cold bear market for uh, the past year, uh, maybe even a, a year and a half. Over at ERD, we have uh, a really well-built-out roadmap um, that includes product releases, uh, like I just mentioned, that includes um, uh, bringing additional accessibility to ERD. This includes you know, anything from partnerships with other DeFi protocols, uh, not just lending, but DeFi in general. It includes uh, creating liquidity pools for USDE, which is our stablecoin that that's baked into the uh, protocol, as well as our governance token, which we'll be releasing once the market begins to recover. But it also uh, includes some sort of uh, real world adoption and expansion as well. And one of the sort of competitive advantages of ERD is that we are looking to take, uh, you know, obviously we're a Web3 and we're a crypto project. But we're also looking to expand into Web2, uh, expand inclusion for Web2 users. And, you know, Arabda, I know that you and I, before we started recording this, we were talking a little bit about your my nomadic lifestyle. And, you know, our experiences are not by any means uh, unique um, within the crypto, uh, crypto world. Uh, I know more people that live the sort of digital nomad lifestyle than I do uh, people that are put uh, and have roots down. You know, I don't know what your experience has been like, but for me, uh, you know, I've lived across China, I've lived across Indonesia, across Turkey, I'm now living in Argentina, uh, and I've seen a lot of people in different circumstances. And one of the things that stuck out to me was in Turkey, they have the world's second, third, largest uh, or uh, highest inflation rate, only to be topped by the place that I am currently living in, Argentina. You know, that's really opened my eyes into this real world benefits that not just USD, but stable coins and a stable store of value really bring to economies, really bring to everyday average people that are just looking to try to get by and trying to save for the future and build for the future. And so that's one of the things that I'm really looking forward to with ERD, connecting it back to your question here, that over the next couple of years, we're, and actually even sooner than that, we've already begun having those conversations of how are we going to bring USDE, the stable store of value, particularly to these high inflation economies? How can we bring our products, make it easy for them, easy for the Web3 and Web2 users to keep their savings in USDE to, you know, the local currency over here in, in Argentina is the Argentinian peso. How can we make it easy for people to convert their pesos that they're earning and living in into USDE? And then at the beginning of every couple of weeks, convert it back into Argentinian pesos so that by the time that those a uh, couple of weeks pass, they're not losing 10, 20, 30 percent on whatever they had in their savings in the Argentinian peso uh, in the first place. So that's something that we're working on as well. Uh, and it's going to be a little bit of an uphill battle whenever Web3 tries to go into Web2. They're always 
is that sort of slog, whether it be regulatory or compliance or anything like that. Um, but it, it is something that we're really looking forward to and something that we are putting a lot of effort into uh, already. Awesome. I love the adoption use case you had around Web3 plus Web2 uh, Web as well, which of course has its own challenges, but also its own merits. Um, so with that, let's talk a bit about security. You already mentioned the audits. You have multiple auditors on it. So what was your security strategy going forward with ERD and why partner with Halborn? Absolutely. I, I mean, I don't think anyone who's going to be watching this video coming to Halborn's YouTube channel is obviously going to uh, be very interested in this question and have a, a really uh, a high value on security. Um, of course. And of course, within blockchain in particular, you need to always be thinking of security as your first and foremost priority. I mean, it's the matter of everything or nothing. If yeah. you get, if a protocol gets hacked, you're done. Um, you're, you lose users, lose their, their money, you lose your funds. Um, and there's no way to come back from that reputationally or User trust wise or community. Mentally. Yeah. Exactly. Any way that you slice it, it's it's game over. Um and you know, we know that over at ERD. Um I, I think that I've mentioned a couple of times already. We come, we've been in blockchain since 2017, and even our co-founders started a couple of years before that. We we know the industry. We come from yield farming uh, backgrounds. We come from trading and adoption backgrounds. We come from all of these sorts of things. So we, we really have a very clear understanding. The biggest risk for us whenever we're interacting with protocols is that what is that security risk. Uh, so security, that's all to say. Security is first and foremost in our minds, which is why we're going through. We're crossing our teeth. We're dotting our eyes just for version one of our main app, which by the way, a lot of our underlying code came from the original Liquidy protocol. We're getting three separate independent audits here by Peck Shield, by Halborn, by Quantstamp, really reputable names within the space. And this is where the majority of our funds are, are being invested. And then you know, once we finish, we release version one mainnet and we continue development on version two, we're going through and we're putting together four to five audits um, for that as well. Um, so it is a really high priority for us. And again, it's, it's very simple. We see it as life or death um, in terms of what our responsibility is for our community of users, as well as sort of setting that standard of how it should be within the industry as well. Yeah, definitely the right focus on security with multiple eyes on the code base itself. Why particularly go with Halborn? I, I bet you had your criteria while selecting the cybersecurity mm -hmm. partners you had to go with. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's pretty simple. We were looking for uh, audit agencies and security companies that, would, that were very reputable. Um, you know, we have a very strong team of developers. In fact, I'm sort of the black sheep on the project team. We have like 12 people and I am one of two people that are not security developers and contract developers. <laughs> so, you know, there's very much uh, an understanding of what we know and very much an understanding of what we, what we don't know as well. Um, and so, you know, it was important for us to find audit companies that knew their stuff, um, that were reputable within the industry. And then we kept coming across Alborn. We participated in conferences all over from Blockchain Week over to Hong Kong. We I just went up to Tokyo last month. We're going to Token 2049. And whenever we pop these questions, people, you know, there's always a few uh, agencies that really sort of stand above the crowd and, and Halborn was one of those. So, uh, you know, we, we just reached out and uh, your team has been absolutely amazing, made it super easy to work with and, and we've had a really great experience. That's great to hear. Thank you, Steve, for this conversation. I had a lot of fun, hope our audience does as well. And thanks again for joining us today. 
Thanks, Rob. This has been wonderful. Really appreciate you, your team, and everything Hellborn has helped do for us. Uh, we've had nothing but a wonderful experience with you guys. You, you really do some great work.